G'day everyone, welcome back to another video. I've had probably a week or so since I've been able to get out. Conditions haven't really been right, but uh, I travelled from Taupo to Wanganui and we stayed at a place called Te Whare Māori there and we did some garden mahi and we hung out, just had a great time with all the crew from there, so massive, massive thank you to all the crew at Te Whare Māori. I've pushed on to Wellington now. It's a beautiful, beautiful morning. Check this out. Wow. Flat, calm and just beautiful. I'm headed out there. Supposed to turn to custard later, so I've only got a short time, but yeah, gonna head out there, get into it. Welcome back underwater, guys. I'd only just got in and I started to see power everywhere. So yeah, I popped this one off and uh, gave it a quick measure. And it just didn't quite make the cut. It was pretty close to legal, but yeah, it wasn't quite there. But yeah, I moved on a bit and found this crayfish and caught it sort of before I got a chance to turn the camera on. But uh, it made the cut and went in the bag. Well, I just found that crayfish. I didn't have my camera on. <laughs> but anyway, it's the first legal one. And I've also managed the legal power off, off camera as well. So that will been in the water for maybe 10 minutes. So it's pretty good. <laughs> So I pushed out a little deeper and as you can tell the vis is actually pretty damn good. So I saw a bunch of kinna from the surface, so just dropped down onto them. And uh, yeah on the way down I noticed a bunch of blue cods so I grabbed a couple of the kinna, picked up a rock and smashed the other one up just kind of to get them interested and uh, yeah they come in pretty quickly there was a stack of them there So yeah, a couple of kinna for the bag. And yeah, drop back down onto where I'd smashed that kinna up. Just to see if I could find any blue cod that I thought might be worth shooting. A nice slow descent. And yeah, there's just stacks of them there yeah I wasn't really sure what the size limit for blue cod was so I watched them for a bit and decided that if a really big one came in I'd, I'd give it a go and that one there it sort of might have been legal but I just wasn't sure so I held off uh, turns out I've recently researched it and it probably would have been legal but never mind so I'd noticed there was uh, a mackerel or kahuru, I'm not entirely sure what this one was from memory, but um, it was floating around so I dropped and hugged onto the rock to see if I could get a shot off at it. And 
and it kind of got curious and started to come in. And I reached out and took a shot and yeah, I was just way too low there and missed it. You get that sometimes. I found another patch of kinna and they look to be pretty decent size. So uh, drop down in on them. And sure enough, they were pumpkins, particularly this first one. It was just a beast. But yeah, there were several really, really good sized kinna here. So yeah, grab the quick arm load. Decided I'd get a few more, so dropped straight back into the patch. I uh, knew the crew would like a decent feeder kinner, so. Yeah, I was just really buzzing on how big they were. We just don't really seem to find kinner this big uh, up north. So it was pretty cool to find them like this. And uh, yeah, grabbed another arm load. I had a bit of, bit of trouble trying to get them all in the bag. The bag was getting pretty full with those two arm loads. So yeah, this one got away on me, but I just quickly raced down and grabbed it again. And yeah, since the bag was so full, I decided I'd uh, have a little snack on this one. So uh, I didn't have a knife on me, so I just jammed this uh, line winder into it and finally managed to get it cracked open and yeah they were big fat rows that were super creamy and in great shape that is amazing oh. mm. So I moved in a bit shallower and I f actually saw this crack of crayfish from the surface. So I dived down to investigate and they were all pretty small and I figured the biggest one in there might be legal. So I had a crack at it, but um, yeah, missed it. So moved on. And there are a couple of crayfish on the periphery, but uh, yeah, then I found this crack that was just absolutely loaded with little guys. Really great sight to see this many uh, crayfish. You know, they're the next generation of crayfish that we can take and eat in a couple of years' time when they grow a bit bigger. So uh, I was pretty happy to see that. <laughs> There's a lot of little crayfish in there. <laughs> So 
So I dive back down again just to have another look. Just make sure there wasn't any um, larger ones in there. But uh, yeah, they're all they're all pretty small in this this hole. I decided to have a bit of a scout around the area where those craze were and I just thought I might pick up, you know, a few more craze around it. Yeah, I ended up finding this little power attached to the kelp and uh, it was kind of a bit different to anything I'd ever seen before. I don't think I've ever seen one before. <sighs> cool. It's going to be way too small, so we'll put it back, but that's cool. So I'd got my rope all tangled up on a rock, and I'd dive down on it to free it up, and while I'd dive down, I'd noticed a crayfish in a crack. So I went back up, breathed up, and uh, came down and had a go at it and uh, it almost got away at me but I was able to get my hand in behind it and pull it out by the tail and it's actually a pretty reasonable sized crayfish. Yep, I have that. Another one for the bag, you beauty. Now I hadn't found too many power by this point so I decided to do a bit of looking and uh, found a little area here that had a few in it and they were, looked like they were going to be legal so here managed to just cruise along popping off the ones I could get off nice and easily. three on that one and uh, after a bit of a measure I had to measure this one pretty carefully but it was legal but yeah all three turned out to be legal so uh, I was pretty happy with that I had to be pretty careful about how I put them in the bag because me crayfish were threatening to escape. The bag was pretty damn full of kinna already, so uh, it was a bit of a bit of a problem. Yeah, next drop I found this really decent sized pile on this rock and uh, when I went to knock it off the whole rock came so uh, I decided I'd just take it with me to the surface and on the way up I managed to twist the power off the rock but uh, this was a really big one. So yeah, by now my uh, camera battery was starting to go flat, so uh, on this dive it finally decided to give up. So yeah, when I found this Oki I flicked the camera on, I knew it was going to die again soon, but uh, yeah, it was a pretty decent sized octopus. 
All right, I'm back. It's freezing cold. The wind's got up and uh, it's starting to get a bit choppy out there. But uh, made it back and just got changed. And uh, I've laid the catch out here. So we've got three crayfish and uh, 10 power. Some of them are pretty decent size, like that one, that's a pretty decent size power. And then a bunch of kinna. And uh, oh, I had a kinna in the water and it was amazing. So hopefully the other, these ones are all just as good. Yeah, I'm actually gonna be in Wellington for the next couple of weeks. So there's gonna be a bit more Wellington content coming out. Oh, it's the day after my dive and uh, I'm just dealing with all of these kinna. and getting some beautiful beautiful fat rows we'll have to sample one beautiful mm. 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 oh my god they're delicious All right, we got these beautiful pao I went and got yesterday, and we're just gonna shell them to prep them up to cook them. So uh, they've got like a ridge down the side here uh, with the holes in it, and I always put that against my palm like that. Take my thumb and I just slip it under the skirt in here, and just get it under the muscle where it attaches to the shell, and it just pops the whole lot out of the shell. You can see this skirt, I just pull it all out of the shell and uh, a bit of juice goes everywhere sometimes, that's all good. So I've got this here now, I'm going to take my knife, I'm just going to run it around this top bit, see there's a, it kind of folds up like that. This is all the pawahua or guts and uh, we'll just cut all of that off around here. We come down here, like that, that can go in our bin, our scrap bin, and then we've got this little tooth in here that the power uses, uses to eat, and we can just get our thumb under it and pull it out, that can go in there as well. Now what we're going to do with this now, we'll drop this in a pot of boiling water for about 30 seconds, and then straight out of the pot of boiling water into a pot of ice water. And this is all like uh, gone really hard and tough and I can't pinch it. What dropping this in the pot of boiling water and then straight into the cold water will do will be soften all of this up and make it really nice and soft and tender. Alright, we've got our crayfish cooked here. And that power I have sliced it up, I've chucked it in boiling water for 30 seconds and then pulled it out straight into cold water then put flour and then egg and then breadcrumb and cut it into slices so we've got like power schnitzel and uh, we're going to cook that up and we're having power schnitzel and crayfish Bro's going to shoot down the shop, get some chips It's going to be our dinner, mate mm, That's nice, good boy Bless mm. yeah. this kai that came from oh, so many hands that went out there. Bless them all. Bless the source of this kai. We're so grateful for it all. Bless the hands that prepared it. May we take the energy that we get from this kai and use it for beautiful, beautiful, magical stuff that helps the world, helps heal the world. Mm. Mm. Amen. 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 Beautiful. Ah oh, man, so grateful. Look at this. Amen. Oh, thank you, Yeah.